Good morning, everyone. Boker Tov. Someone told me a story. He was in the gym working out on the treadmill, and he had his iPod with his earphones and listening to something, and something slipped. He, he, he lost balance, and his phone and his headphones went flying. When he went to pick up his phone and his headphone, he saw that the rubber tip on the ear, on the earphone, on the headphone, fell off. So he's looking around the gym, you know, 10 minutes looking for the rubber tip to put back on. He can't find it. So finally he just goes ahead, he finishes his exercise. Lady is walking around during the day and he touches his ear for something. He sees the rubber piece is stuck inside his ear. And I was thinking it's a good metaphor in life. Sometimes we look all over the place for something. We don't realize it's, it's right inside of us. We already have the answer. We already have what we're looking for. We don't have to look very far. This week's parsha, we start the story of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we know that Yosef was the first Jewish leader in Egypt. And Moshe Rabbeinu is the second Jewish leader in Egypt. Yosef brings the Jews into Egypt. Moshe takes the Jews out of Egypt. But there are a lot of similarities between Moshe and Yosef. The first one is they both marry, marry foreign girls, so to speak, right? Uh, Moshe, Yosef marries an Egyptian girl, and Moshe marries a Midianite girl. Another commonality is they both had to run away or leave their homeland because their lives were in danger. Yosef, of course, was thrown into the pit. His brothers wanted to kill him. And Moshe Rabbeinu had to run away because Paro wanted to kill him. In addition to that, they both had two sons. But not only did they both have two sons, the first son was named to reflect their hardships, and their second name was reflecting their success. Yosef's first son was Menashe, Hashem shall let me forget all my hardships. Ephraim, the second son, was God let me be prosperous in the land of my affliction. When you come to the two sons of Moshe Ben, you have the same thing. Gershon, I am a stranger, a foreigner in another land. And the second name, Eliezer, God save me from the sword of power. And one other commonality between these two personalities, Yosef and Moshe, is that both of their father-in-laws were priests of other gods. By, by Yisro, by Yisro, of course, was, was a, a priest of Midian, the father of Moshe Benu. But Yosef's father was also a priest in Egypt. It says he married Asnas Bas Potifera Kohen On. He was a priest of On. So there's a lot of commonalities. But one commonality that really goes unnoticed is fascinating. When you come to the end of the whole Torah, Simcha's Torah day, and you read the blessings of Moshe, when he comes to Yosef, the tribe of Joseph, you know what he says? One of the things he says, Uritzon shochne sne tevoasa arosh Yosef. May the favor of God who dwelled in the burning bush, sne, the burning bush, be upon the head of Joseph. Moshe Benu takes his experience of meeting God in the burning bush, and he says, this favor of God at the burning bush is upon Joseph. What's the connection between the burning bush and Yosef? Yosef died before the story of the burning bush. Why is Moshe Benu and his blessings evoking the story of the burning bush? And then we know the burning bush was the start of the redemption of the Jewish people, the revelation at the burning bush. And the burning bush serves as a metaphor for many things. Commentaries talk about a lot of metaphors, but one of the metaphors is it was a thorn bush, thorns all around, prickly, hard, but on the inside there was a flame burning that could never be consumed. And what was God showing Moshe Rabbeinu? <clears throat> that sometimes you meet a Jew as a leader, you're going to be the leader of the Jewish people. The Jew on the outside looks like he has thorns. He's prickly. He, he rejects you. He rejects Judaism. He seems hard. He seems uninterested in Judaism in a relationship with Hashem. But don't be dismayed. Don't be concerned about the outer exterior appearance of the Jew. Don't be fooled by the facade. Within that thorn bush, that Jew who seems so angry and rebellious and rejecting Judaism, there's a flame burning within. There's an ashama, there's a godly soul. There's a fire that can never be consumed. No matter how much the Jew is defiant on the external with his thorny bush, on the inside, there's a Jewish soul, which is burning, which is a glow, the pintaliyid, and it will never be consumed. That was the lesson for Moshe Rabbeinu. And that was the lesson of Yosef. Yosef was put through so much hardship in life. His brothers rejected him, threw him in a pit, he went into slavery, then in slavery, he's thrown into prison. His, heart, his life was full of thorns, it was like a thorn bush. 
But he always believed in the fire within. He knew his own potential. He knew his own greatness. He knew, he believed in his ability to be great. And that fire, that passion, that faith was never consumed. And therefore, no matter how many thorn bushes surrounded his life, he, like the, like the flame, it went up to the heaven. He rose to the greatest heights because he believed in the fire within. And that's the first lesson of redemption that God teaches Moshe and every human being. If you want to redeem yourself from whatever it is you need redemption, like Yosef, like Moshe Rabbeinu, you have to believe in the fire within. You have to know you have a godly soul. And whatever the exterior of your life looks like, no matter how many thorns are poking you and pricking you, know you have within you already the ability to set yourself free, to rise above it like a fire that goes above everything, and the flame within you can never die, can never be consumed. Adonai,